All right, what's up guys? Welcome back for week three of the Draft Premier League. This video is gonna be going up a little bit late because I didn't have as much time as I would have liked within the past few days or today to record this video, but it's fine. You guys are still gonna get this on Thursday and you're gonna get the rest of the videos regularly scheduled. So make sure to, that you're subscribed and uh, that you like the video so that you don't miss out on tomorrow's video, Saturday's video, as well as Sunday's. So here we go. We are facing off against Pori God Squad. We got Wigglytuff's Guild against them this weekend. This is game one. It's Burger versus Garf. This was played pretty early, I believe uh, either Thursday or Friday uh, of last week. And we have our Scarlet and Violet 3 team facing off against one of theirs. And this team, uh, as you guys saw last week, did not come away with a win. It failed in the last few seconds against Arillaboom. And uh, then we're, we're bringing it back for this week. Uh, but this is also one of the teams that we want to look into making some transactions for. So even if it doesn't pick up a win here, there'll be further confirmation that we need to do something about it. So Mox went pretty well for this one. I think that we had a the matchup under pretty good control and then the game happened and let's check it out so turn one we're going to see talon flame lead off against granbolt and uh, burger correctly predicts thunder wave and goes out into goldengo this is something that we did see in mox and uh, now goes for shadow ball here uh, as opposed to going for we did have a uh, dazzling gleam and we had another coverage move here uh, that i think would have been a better click uh, overall as granbolt shouldn't be staying in on Goldengo, so I don't necessarily agree with the Shadow Ball. Not a terrible play though, but Braviary does get to come in for free. Now we don't want to take damage here, so we're going to switch out into Talon Flame on U-turn. Uh, Flame Body does not proc, and uh, Grand Bull comes in once again and gets off an Intimidate. Now Burger is going to go into Sand Slash on Earthquake, uh, so good play covering the physical moves. Uh, obviously, Thunder Wave there would have been just a, like a repeat of the turn, and that's not what Garf wanted, so uh, good play from Burger. As now we're gonna get up our rocks into the Urshifu, and the Sand Slash is gonna switch out into Goldengo on a Dark Urshifu, so not 100% sure about that one. Uh, didn't love that play. I think that we could have just hit the Urshifu and scouted its set, but we go into Goldengo, and uh, the Shifu tears into a flying type, crits us, but we are Colber, so we're able to eat that. And we go for a Dazzling Gleam to chip the Urshifu a little bit. However, it's not enough. Uh, now, switch out into Talon Flame here. Uh, this one, this is the, the turn that I really don't understand. Uh, you have a 17% gold angle that I don't feel is doing too much into the rest of the team. Yes, it's a Grand Bull switch in, I guess, for Thunder Wave, uh, but we still have Sand Slash at 96. Like, if you're going to keep Sand Slash, don't keep the gold angle, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Um, like, pick pick one of the two <laughs> to sack into the, into the Shifu. Don't make it the, the Talon Flame, and the Talon Flame comes in on Wicked Blow and gets blown up immediately because the Urshifu's at plus two. I don't love that. I think the Talon Flame had an excellent matchup here. It's faster than everything on the opposing team other than Scarves or Booster Moth or Battle Bonded Greninja, but initially it's faster, so I don't love it. But Talon Flame goes down, and now we're going to go into Valiant. And we're going to go for Moonblast, and as you're going to see, this is not going to pick up the KO. It's going to leave the Shifu on 2%, and we're going to die to Poison Jab. So we essentially just sack two Mons for free uh, to get the Urshifu, uh, Urshifu down to 2%. Now we are going to Revenge it here with Superior. Uh, we see Wicked uh, Swords Dance, Wicked Blow, Poison Jab, so I guess that um, they could have still had Sucker Punch, uh, but we do Terra into a Dark-type here to knock out the Shifu. And uh, now Braviary is going to come in and threaten us out with like U-Turn, Brave Bird, Close Combat, any one of those things. Goes for U-Turn, Goldengo comes in, and Moth comes in and it boots. So we switch out into Samurott, T-Spikes go up, and uh, Grand Bull comes in, as I believe we go for a Ceaseless Edge to get up a spike. Pretty good, looks decent. However, there is a Boots Moth, so that's not really gonna be taking too much damage. Player Off comes out, knocks out our Goldengo. Now we're gonna go into Sand Slash to spin away the T-Spike to enable Serp and Samurott to do their thing. Um, and we take a Rocky Helmet hit. Gonna take a play rough as well. It's gonna crit us for 36%. Don't really think the crit matters, as uh, we are gonna go for an Earthquake here. As you'll see, the Grand Bull misses play rough, uh, and then misses another play rough on the next turn. So I really don't think the crit mattered, uh, ultimately. And uh, our Sand Slash is gonna get away uh, from here with a, uh, a kill on the Grand Bull, which is cool. Uh, and I think we also, yeah, we live poison because it's normal poison, right? So. Uh, now we're plus one speed, but this does enable the Greninja to come in for free. And uh, it's going to take hazards, but uh, goes for Grass Knot, knocks out our Sand Slash, gets its Battle Bond, uh, takes a Life Orb hit, 
and then Samurott is going to come in. It's going to go for another Grass Knot, but that is not going to knock us out. As you can see, we are quite specially defensive, and we go for a uh, Sacred Sword and knock out the Greninja. Now, Iron Treads comes in, takes Rocks and Spike, um, but Aqua Jet is not enough to knock it out. I guess that uh, we had to go for Aqua Jet anyway, but uh, I believe this Treads is Scarfed based on what happens this next turn. Uh, we go into Serp and uh, Earthquake comes out before Serp gets to go for a Leaf Storm uh, this turn. So very unfortunate as uh, and it, this looks like offensive damage as well from Treads. Treads isn't like the strongest mana ever and Serp is quite tanky. So for it to be faster and also get off that much damage means that I think it's Scarfed. Uh, and uh, we're going to go for a Leaf Storm here and knock out the treads, but unfortunately that is not going to save us into the Boots Braviary as Terra Blast only does 39% because we're only at plus two and Close Combat is going to knock us out. So unfortunate, I don't think that uh, Burger played that super bad, but I don't think that he needed to sack the Talonflame. I think that the 19% or 17% Goldengo would have been a fine sack, uh, but you live in the in you learn uh i think it was still decently played so uh not uh, not to knock burger also this team needs changes so it's all good anyway let's move on to game two and for game two we have a sword and shield game scrappy versus jimmy g the milkman himself you guys don't know jimmy's uh, been a teammate of mine he's he's known as a great player uh amongst the uh the masses and yeah he's he's really solid and scrappy came on away with a big win last week against skyhorse uh, the captain for trick of eye so we got a, quite the showdown here as you can see jimmy's rocking with a little bit more of an unconventional team for sword and shield it's actually funny that sword and shield is our game too because we've been having a very very early sword and shield games every single week so that's uh, that's quite interesting but i don't know if that's going to persist all season but anyway uh we we seem to have an interesting matchup here they have uh two rock types for some reason and we have uh, a cartana so that's quite nice and their only real leaf blade switch in is uh the age of slash and uh, Smart Strike also looks pretty good if you eliminate the Rotom, and then it's still just the Aegis Slash, right? Uh, also, Rotom didn't look the best in this matchup. Like, it's really abusable. I'm actually kind of surprised they brought it. Uh, but they also brought their two Rock types, as you can see. So let's see how Scrappy deals with this one. So Swampert's going to be our lead, and Glaring Moltres is theirs. And uh, they go for a Nasty Plot. We go for Stone Edge, knock them down to... Uh, they are weakness policy as well. So they get a plus one and a plus two here. Uh, so they go up to plus five <laughs> on turn one through the use of uh, weakness policy. And we're going to hit them for 56. So this is over half. Uh, and as you can see, our, our Swampert was rocking Stone Edge specifically for their two flying types. Um, and then uh, they're going to get their Berserk. They're going to go up to plus five. They're going to fire Wrath and we take 66. We are self vest. And uh, we do not die, and we do not get flinched, and we don't miss Stone Edge. So honestly, perfect first two turns for us. Incredible. And uh, yeah, we're going to knock out the Moltres on our Swampert still alive. Now, in comes Shields Pizza, and we're going to go into uh, Mana Buzz on the Close Combat. It does 39%. That's absolutely fine. And they're going to Stance Change using King Shield. And uh, we're going to go for a Roost this turn. Now, Roost was a little bit dangerous because, uh, of course, if Mandibuzz is faster than the Aegis Slash, which normally it is, then we're going to take super effective damage from the close combat. But, of course, they're at minus one, so they don't really want to take a foul play or a knockoff, right? So they go for King Shield. We get her off a Roost. Then we're going to go for a knockoff into Terrakion. They get a Justified Boost. So we're triggering, like, all their abilities. Stone Edge triggered Berserk. Now we're triggering the uh, Justified on Terrakion. And we're going to switch out into Amoongus as the Terrakion goes for a Swords Dance. And uh, it's going to miss Stone Edge into Amoongus, and we get off a Spore. Now, uh, I don't believe that Stone Edge killed Amoongus from here, uh, from plus three. And uh, as you're going to see in a couple of turns, this doesn't end up really mattering. So uh, we're going to switch out into Copperaja. They stay asleep. And then the Terrakion immediately wakes up and knocks out our Copperaja with close combat. So it's like we just picked to sack off Copperaja instead of sacking off Amoongus, essentially, is what happened. Um, even if the Stone Edge did like crit or kill us, if it hit a roll or, or whatever. So we just chose to sack Copperaja. Ultimately, the Spore Miss, the, the, not the Spore Miss, the, the Stone Edge Miss didn't really matter. So uh, we get to uh, sack off our Copperaja here and position with Cartana. Now, of course, the Terrak isn't Scarfed, so Cartana is free to click Smart Strike. Cartana is naturally faster than Terrakion, of course. So we just click Smart Strike. Now we're going to switch out into Kirim and the... Uh, 
Tornadus goes for a U-turn back into Tarakion. So the threat is back in. Now we go back into Amoongus. Goes for close combat. As you can see, it does 21%. And uh, now we get eject buttoned out into Kartana again. And now Aegislash comes in as we go for a smart strike. And uh, it's not leftovers. So that's nice. Now we get an Armanda Buzz. They go for an Iron Head. Uh, as that does about the same as close combat. And then we get off a U-turn on the incoming Terrakion, so quite nice for us. Now we get an Amoongus, and this is a free Spore. So the uh, Rotom falls asleep, and now Tornadus comes in on Giga Drain. So good plays from Jimmy, positioning the uh, the Tornadus in on the Amoongus without it being able to go to sleep. Of course, there is Sleep Claws. And now they get off a U-turn on our Kiram, and uh, we go right back to Amoongus. Once again, Swords Dance comes out. And now Zen Headbutt comes out and does 77% as we get off a Giga Drain. And I think at this point, we're just going to sack off our Swampert and keep our Amoongus. But they miss Stone Edge. Not that it matters. They can just follow it up with a close combat and just knock us out, knock us out anyway. It doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, now we go into Kartana. We threaten out the Terrakion again. And the uh, Tornadus comes back in and takes 46% from Smart Strike. We go into Amoongus. We take a U-turn. And uh, Rhyperior now comes in interestingly, and we take a heat crash and die. So not looking great. It's 3v5, but now Kiram's in, and now it's not getting you turned on. And in comes the uh, the Aegislash, and we freeze it. So terrible for them. Uh, great for us, <laughs> as that is the first Ice Beam we have clicked, and it instantly freezes. And now we get up a free substitute. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go for Roost. And we're going to get back up to full. And the Aegislash just keeps staying frozen. And now we Earth Power it down to 5%. It gets its weakness policy activated, but stays frozen. Tries to Shadow Sneak to break the sub and fails again. So I think that was like five or six freeze turns. So obviously, huge for Scrappy. Sucks for Jimmy. Uh, not a way you want to lose a game, but he does get frozen. Now, the game's not over, of course, uh, but it's going to be very tough from here. So Rhyperior comes in, Ice Beam triggers. Uh, no policy uh, this time. So we, we literally triggered two weakness policies and justified, and somehow we are still in this game. Mandibuzz comes in on Earthquake as uh, the Rhyperior now switches out, so I'm thinking it's Choiced uh, based on that, and uh, most likely Scarfed, I would think, uh, but it could also be Choice Banded. Now, uh, the Terrakion comes in on U-Turn again, and now Kartana is free to click Leaf Blade as of here, but it clicks Smart Strike again. I guess trying to catch the Tornadus, and goes up to plus one. Torn comes in. We go into Mandibuzz, and uh, Hurricane Connects does 25%, not enough. Toxic comes out, as we are going to go for a U-turn here, and now this is a repositioning of Kiram. And uh, as you can see, there's not really an Ice Beam switch in. Now, normally people bring Freeze Dry when they see a, a Rotom. As you can see, our set does not have Freeze Dry because Rotom can't break our sub, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Uh, we can literally just sit here, and as you can see, Ice Beam does a good amount of damage regardless. We can just sit here, sub, and just wait to beat the Rotom. Uh, and we are faster than the Rotom, so even uh, if it had like Toxic or whatever and woke up instantly, we would have been behind a sub. And now we just Ice Beam a few times. Rotom finally wakes up and goes for a Volt Switch, but of course that does not break the sub. In comes Tornadus and uh, goes for a U-turn, fails to break the sub again, and uh, we just Ice Beam here and knock out the Rotom. Uh, and now back comes in the Torn, and I think here we... I think that we should have maybe subbed but uh, to cover U-turn, but I think it's fine. because Yeah, because Tarak was dead to Ice Beam anyway. Actually, it's a 24%, so uh, that was free. And then we get off the Earth Power on the Terrakion. So very fortunate freeze. This Kirim has now won two games by freezing Steel types. Uh, that it should not be beating at all, but uh, I think that we still had the game somewhat under control. Uh, Stone Edge Mist sucked, but honestly, I think that if you have Zen Headbutt tacked, you should be clicking Zen Headbutt there. I don't think that Stone Edge is the click. You click the more accurate move that's going to knock out the Pokemon in front of you. Granted, the Amoongus could have been Payapa at that point. I don't think that Eject Button was revealed yet, so there was that, but... Kudos to uh, Scrappy for winning the game, uh, and uh, apologies to Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's a great guy, and uh, sucks to get frozen like that on your Aegis Slash. Uh, it was a really good mon in the matchup, so I do feel for him, but uh, we do tie up the series, and we are now one and one, and 
that's it for, for these two games. We've got more coming tomorrow, of course, as usual. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel or otherwise, make sure to hit like on the video so that I know you guys enjoyed it and let me know which game you guys are most excited to see this week. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.